Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. On July 17th, in the year of our Lord, 1446, John Talbot, a loyal nobleman to the crown, military leader, and hero of the Hundred Years' War, was honored by King Henry VI for his service. By letters patent, he was granted the hereditary titles of Earl of Shrewsbury, Earl of Waterford, and by this also, the Lord High Steward of Ireland. Since that time, the Lord High Stewards of Ireland have presented the Sword of Mercy at the coronation of all British monarchs. And it was from this man's loins that some five centuries and twenty generations later, a man who by birthright also carried the same kirtana would be a man to dive headfirst into the British automotive industry. Charles Henry John Chedwind Talbot, 20th Earl of Shrewsbury, Lord High Steward of Ireland. He was born in London in 1860, the only son and heir to a family that had possessed an absurd amount of wealth for over half a millennia. His father, also named Charles, prepared his only son for the mantle he would eventually carry with the finest education Britain had to offer. His schooling was at Eton College, where he was quite adept at business and mathematics. His father passed away while he was at Eton, and at age 16, he inherited the family titles. He would be the Lord High Steward of Ireland for the rest of his life. Indeed, he personally presented the sword at the coronation of both King Edward VII and George V. The young Earl completed his education in 1883. He was quite fascinated with the transportation industry as a whole due to the rapid technological advances affecting it at the time. So in 1884, he decided to establish a new company in London that provided luxury taxi service. He purchased 35 handsome cabs from the Forder Company, whom themselves were well known for making luxury cabs and carriages, even possessing a royal warrant for them. Handsome cabs are two-wheeled instead of four, and these were top of the line, plush, comfortable, and light, making them swift as well. Yet Charles had an idea. Rubber tires were all the rage with bicycles. Why not put them on his horse-drawn cabs? It would make them quieter, even more comfortable to ride in, and reduce the overall wear to the cab itself. So he equipped all of his cabs with them, being the first cab company ever to do so, and leased his cabs and horses to drivers for a not-so-modest one pound per day. Yet it worked for the cabs themselves were better than any others on the streets of London, and so passengers would pay a premium price for their service. The company expanded into Paris as well, and the good Earl was making both good money and connections in the industry. This led him into the tire business as well. He established a relationship with Dunlop to provide tires for his cabs, and in 1893 opened a distributorship in London to sell the tires to all customers. This business would expand considerably and would supplant the cab business, as that company had been having labor disputes with the drivers to a negative effect. This, in turn, would lead Talbot to establish a new large public concern in 1900, the Shrewsbury ST and Chandler Tire Company Limited. This company would both distribute and manufacture products associated with personal transport. Motor cars, tires, bicycles, carriages, bulk manufacturing supplies, you name it. It was through this large company that Charles became acquainted with Adolphe Clément. Clément was, at the time, both the French Dunlop dealer and manufacturer of the Clément Gladiator motor car, and the Earl wanted to begin to make cars in Britain and not just import them. He asked Adolphe to buy into the company and help to establish it as a car-making factory. Clément agreed, and in 1902, Charles established Clément Talbot Limited to make cars in London. The new factory was amongst the most modern in the world and built to look like a palace instead of a factory, with marble walls and columns, fountains, frescoes gracing the halls, and of course the great family crest of Shrewsbury Talbot adorning the stained glass windows. The building still exists today, though it is now a performing arts center known as Ladbroke Hall and no longer used for manufacturing cars. The first Clément Talbot cars rolled out of the factory in 1903 and were essentially anglicized Clément Gladiators. 
And for the next couple of years, the cars were essentially English versions of the offerings of the French Clément Bayard company, which, of course, Adolphe founded. It was in 1906 that the French connection was quietly dropped and Talbot became a true British make of car. The Talbot CT4-ZB was a beautiful 40-horsepower inline four-cylinder engine with a four-speed transmission and shaft drive. They proved to be quick and sporty gaining some com competition success in both hill climbs and circuit racing. A smaller version, a 12-horsepower car, was also offered the same year, and both Talbots were well-received by the British public and beyond. By 1907, all Talbots were British-designed and built, though the company would license-build other cars on occasion. Talbots of pre-World War I were some of England's great sports and touring cars, and we'll see more of them in the future. And Charles, the Earl of Shrewsbury and Talbot, would be a petrol head for the rest of his life, making, selling, driving, and enjoying his cars. And his grandson, also Charles, like his fathers before him, will soon carry the sword of mercy as the Lord High Steward of Ireland at the coronation of England's newest monarch, King Charles III. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.